Hello, what's up? Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project. This is the webinar on SEO for niche sites. And we'll get rolling here in a second. I will tell you right off the bat, I am not feeling well. I'm pretty sick. <laughs> I have a cold. I'm pretty sure I have a fever. I haven't slept well in days. It's a really sad story, I know. However, I had this thing scheduled, this webinar right here scheduled for um, weeks. So definitely the show must go on. I'm going to take a nap when I finish up. But that said, that means that I'm going to try something a little bit different. <coughs> One of the first things I'm going to try and do the whole time is not cough into the microphone. I'm going to try and mute it, but I'm going to do my best <laughs> to uh, like respect everyone's ears and not cough into the microphone. What's up, by the way? Adrian's on in Santiago as well. Give me a shout. It sounds like everyone can hear me. Otherwise, folks would tell me you couldn't hear me. So what is going to happen today? We'll we'll get we'll get started. I'll say hello, do the normal normal intro here. Karen, hi. And then I'm going to play a recording, a pre-recorded session on uh, this presentation. And I haven't done this uh, much before. I think maybe I tried it once, but. I figured this this situation better than canceling. I can show you something out of my archive, and um, hopefully that'll work. And then I'll come back through. It's about thirty seven minutes of the presentation. I'll come back when it's all done, and then we'll answer questions. Hopefully, me sitting here quietly for thirty seven minutes will allow me to rest my voice, kind of get it together, and um, that sort of thing. And uh, by the way, I mentioned it, uh, I'll mention it again in a second, but if you have some kind of screen freeze, I see Somesh says there's a screen freeze, refresh it. If there's some, some kind of issue or something, refresh it on your side. Um, a lot of times that will fix the issue. So, okay, I need to have more energy at least for the uh <laughs> the intro all right people now multiple people are saying it's freezing it could actually be freezing sometimes that happens with the webinar jam servers and stuff try and refresh it though so by the way is is everyone seeing a freeze um and i'll, I'll type it in because obviously if it's frozen you maybe can't hear me frozen for everyone okay all right yeah see and this is the this is the weird game that we end up playing. One person says it and then I freak out. Then I start checking stuff. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I know a few people, uh, looks like the folks that are joining up, um, it's slowed down. And the other, the other thing is, um, if you're not in North America, it's probably not unusual for the video not to be super awesome so a little bit of a lag marcel i know you mentioned that mentioning that so um you know on my end i'm at least wired into the wall and have fiber to the house so okay i'm gonna try and start this video and at the end i'll answer questions so and i'll, I'll be in the chat hanging out with everyone and let's see if this thing works Let's see. Very strange. Okay. I'm not sure. Cool. All right. I'm going to try and play the video. <laughs> it wasn't 100% clear. 100% clear if it was. Cool. Let's do it. We have... Um several people on. If you're just joining up, Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project. We're going to get into the presentation, which is SEO for niche sites. And really, it's a plan. I'm going to outline a plan for you. Perfect. And I'm going to get rid of the bookmark bar just to give us a little more real estate. So if, if, if <clears throat> excuse me, if you are joining up, got really excited and, and talked over myself there. So if it's your first time on one of these webinars or live streams, let me know. I'm interested to hear. And by the way, um, 
I think I have a couple questions throughout. So when I ask them, you can just answer back in the chat and I'll, you know, see it there. And quick note, as we are getting rolling, if the audio freezes, if the video freezes or something like that, just refresh it. Also let me know in the chat, but usually if you refresh it, it should come back and it should start working. Um, a lot of times if you you know mention it in the chat, other people will say, hey, it's fine. Or if I see like everyone can't see it, then I know there's a problem. But most of the time a refresh will work. Okay, I already did the sound check, but I always put this slide in here just to be sure. Here's a quote. So all generalizations are false, including this one. That's a Mark Twain quote, at least I believe it's Mark Twain. And I put that in here because I'm telling you an SEO plan that is generalized. This is basically a plan that you can use, an approach that you can use, but there's a lot of generalizations made. And I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. I'm saying this is a way to do it. And there are dozens of other ways. Uh, many other people have completely different focuses and you know what, their ways are valid too. I haven't tested everything. I'm just telling you um, what I've done in the past. And I will mention that, you know, I said it before, there are some gray hats, techniques that I'm going to mention here. I don't use them, by the way, and I'll point them out specifically. However, I do know that they can work and I have friends and peers that are using these gray hat methods with great success. And it's a valid thing to do. It's just not my, um, it's not my preference. So as I mentioned, I'm Doug Cunnington. I'm the founder of Niche Site Project, which is an internet marketing blog. And I've been been blogging there for about four years, and that is a picture of my dad and I, my, my late dog Brody there at uh, Yellowstone. Obviously, we're at the Old Faithful Geyser, which is, I think, like from door to, you know, the boardwalk there. It's maybe like two and a half, three hours. So I live really close to Yellowstone, which is awesome. It's a great, great place. So past. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm back on. I think I should be. I think the video. <laughs> I think the video was not where it was supposed to be. And I'm not sure what's up with that. I apologize. I think I, I wanted to cut out some other stuff. So I'm going to try to restart it. Sorry, this uh, there's always like some kind of tech issue here. Um and I hope this isn't gonna repeat stuff. Cool, let's do it. We have um, several people on. If you're just joining up, Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project. We're gonna get into the presentation, which is SEO for niche sites. And really it's a plan. I'm gonna outline a plan for you. Perfect. And I'm gonna get rid of the bookmark bar just to give us a little more real estate. So it, if, if <clears throat> Excuse me. If you are joining up, got really excited and, and talked over myself there. So if, if it's your first time on one of these webinars or live streams, let me know. I'm interested to hear. And by the way, um, I think I have a couple questions throughout. So when I ask them, you can just answer back in the chat and I'll, you know, see it there. And quick note, as we are getting rolling, if the audio freezes, if the video freezes or something like that, just refresh it. Also let me know in the chat, but usually if you refresh it, it should come back and it should start working. Um, a lot of times if you you know mention it in the chat, other people will say, hey, it's fine. Or if I see like everyone can't see it, then I know there's a problem, but most of the time a refresh will work. Okay, I already did the sound check, but I always put this slide in here just to be sure. Here's a quote. So all generalizations are false, including this one. That's a Mark Twain quote, at least I believe it's Mark Twain. And I put that in here because I'm telling you an SEO plan that is generalized. This is basically 
a plan that you can use, a, an approach that you can use, but there's a lot of generalizations made. And I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. I'm saying this is a way to do it. And there are dozens of other ways. Uh, many other people have completely different focuses and you know what their ways are valid too. I haven't tested everything. I'm just telling you um, what I've done in the past. And I will mention that, you know, I said it before, there are some gray hats techniques that I'm going to mention here. I don't use them, by the way, and I'll point them out specifically. However, I do know that they can work. And I have friends and peers that are using these gray hat methods with great success. And it's a valid thing to do. It's just not my, um, it's not my preference. So as I mentioned, I'm Doug Cunnington. I'm the founder of Niche Site Project, which is an internet marketing blog. And I've been been blogging there for about four years. And that is a picture of my dad and I, my, my late dog Brody there at uh, Yellowstone. Obviously, we're at the Old Faithful Geyser, which is, I think, like from door to, you know, the boardwalk there. It's maybe like two and a half, three hours. So I live really close to Yellowstone, which is awesome. It's a great, great place. So past track record, which I only mention this because a lot of people give advice um, that just regurgitate stuff. But I do have a past track record. I've had successful niche sites. I've had ups and downs. I've coached a lot of other people. I've done guest blogging, talking about internet marketing, in different areas, which I focus in. And I'm a PMP, which is a project management professional. So I do internet marketing full time at this point. Um, I have been doing it full time for two years, but before that, I had about 10 years of experience as a corporate or in a, well, as a corporate drone, really, but I was a project manager for software companies. I did management consulting and all that sort of corporate stuff. So it's an unusual, I think, an unusual skill set that I bring to the table. And I have been featured on many places. Uh, I won't read them all out, but I'm sure you recognize some of them. And I was mentioned. Derek on social triggers most recently. So I always put this timeline in. Part of the reason is a reminder for myself. So I've had ups and downs. Like there were some rocky points for sure. And the thing is, um, I got a fast start, you know, back in the day in 2013. You could start a new site and you could rank it within you know, six weeks, two months, three months or so, like number one for like really competitive terms. And you'll notice this uh, roller coaster ride where, you know, my rankings dropped and my sites were penalized and I launched a bunch of more sites and they were penalized too. And then, uh, like I said, two years ago, 2015, I got laid off from my job after I'd worked there for like nine years and things started to turn around at that point. Of course, you see it's a low point here intentionally. And most recently, sort of this mark here up here. I sold a site uh, with a business partner and, and myself. Uh, we sold a site for 235, which was really cool. It seems like just unreal considering where we started from. So I've had the ups and downs. So part of the reason I don't use the gray hat stuff is because of this timeline here. Like I said, Q&A is at the end. Feel free to ask questions throughout. You can um, you know, ask questions like Blake did here. Um, and thank you for noting it as a question. So just, I think the layout may have changed just a tad, but the idea is you can, uh, use the, uh, I guess the form there, the drop down next to the chat area, the chat field, and then you can mark it as a question it makes it much easier for me, especially at the end. So quick note, you know, why niche sites? Why? should you be interested in niche sites if you don't have a site yet? So in, in quick question, while I'm talking about this, how many people have a niche site right now? Just say, yeah, I have one right now. And let me know in the chat. And if you don't say no, but I'm thinking about it or kind of where you're at, that'll help me shape the presentation for, you know, as best I can for the unique audience that we have today. So why niche sites? For me, it's like one of the, you know, best ways to get started. The reason why is the startup costs are low, the concepts are simple in theory, and none of the steps are really like super complicated. It's just putting together a string of you know simple tasks 
um, in the right order over a period of time. You get the benefit of compound interest, you know, working on a long term project slowly, you know, improving over time. And the other part is you build skills in various areas, right? So you can focus on the SEO portion of it. You could focus on white hat SEO, gray hat SEO. You could focus on the content. Maybe you find that, um, cause when I got started, by the way, I didn't know anything about WordPress, making money online, niche sites or anything. So maybe you're in the same position. You start playing around with WordPress and you realize you really like designing websites and working with themes and helping people do that. So niche sites may not be like the end of the road for you or your, you know, path to working for yourself, but you can learn a lot of skills from working on niche sites that, you know, maybe you just stick with that web design stuff and you're a web design consultant or freelancer and you could take that. And there are many areas. I mean, you could end up being a copywriter. You could end up being an email um, marketer in general. So I'll leave it at that, but it's a great place to learn the ropes overall. Like I said, you can get the design aspect. You can learn SEO. You can just like learn a bunch about marketing, which is one thing that happened to me. And, you know, some people turn into like domain flippers, right? It's a simple a simple concept of buying a domain and hanging on to it until someone wants to buy it from. You. So there are many places to go with niche sites and you know, you could leave, I'll leave it at that. So, so a couple of examples of like how niche sites could work. Everyone may recognize some of the folks I'm going to mention here, but Dave Fox, um, I coached him back in early 2015 um through mid 2015 and he slowly grew his uh site to from i think that was about a thousand bucks or 1500 bucks or so in january of 2016 to well i can't see that very well but it looks like about six thousand bucks in december of 2016 and he's consistently making between like five and seven thousand or so i haven't you know, checked with him lately, but it, this stuff basically changed his life. He was a, a musician. He's still a musician, but he would do some uh, you know, music teaching. Uh, he's a drummer, a guitarist, and, you know, I think he, he paints too. So he's an artist all around, but he, through, you know, a ton of hard work and, and coaching with me, he was able to put, put together basically a new career for himself. Okay. So I see, I'm gonna take a quick break and look over at the chat. So a few, uh, several people do have sites, uh, Caesar, Chuck, Paul, Bobby, um, Chance, we have uh, Brett. Brent is just thinking about it right now. Mike has a site, Alakash has a site, Shade, uh, not right now. And it, okay, so it sounds like a lot of people do have sites, at least, uh, with a few posts, I see Gabriel just, just has one site. Audrey, um, you want to get started right away. And Randy, um, let's see. Cool. So it sounds like everyone is getting right into it. Either you have a site or it's been up for a while, um, and there's a handful of people that don't. So that's cool. It's very exciting for everyone, for sure. And then other example is Rob. So I coached, um, actually I met Rob way back in the day. He was a reader of Niche Site Project. He just shot me an email. And this was like back in mid 2014. I could tell he was doing well. And uh, we formed a mastermind group. So we formed a mastermind group with one other person. And through the years, you know, Rob and I have uh, been in mastermind groups in some form or another. There was a point where you know, I could tell he needed some systems set up. He needed help with templates and basically areas where my project management experience would really help. So I coached him through about five or six sessions. And these are all on YouTube, by the way. So I think uh, if you're on the email list, you should get, you know, links to these hidden videos. But Rob last year in 2016 made $223,000 just from Amazon. Okay, so just from Amazon and he has other affiliate programs that he's part of. So Rob's doing really well. So we'll, we can see Rob's doing really well and 
you know, like I said, he and I were business partners. We, we sold a site earlier this year, and that was a good thing too. So let's get into it. This is the SEO plan for niche sites. It works for authority sites too, which by the way, that's just semantics. So some people call them authority sites. Some people call them niche sites. Okay. So link building is a game of incremental gains. And again, this is an idea of kind of compound interest where, you know, 1% over time really adds up. And, you know, I'm not saying these tactics in here will give you like a 1% gain every time you do something, but you have to look at it that way. You can't just do a bunch of work in, you know, a month and then expect it to just magically work out for you. This is a grind. This is not easy. So there's nothing hard though. There isn't anything like super complicated. It's just showing up more days than you don't show up and doing the work. Okay. There's a lot of text on this slide. I tried not to do that uh, too much, but this is just the overview. We're going to go over social profiles, internal linking, blog commenting, guest posting, web 2.0 blogs, PVNs is private blog networks. Those two are gray hat, by the way. And next, and kind of a bonus, I'm going to throw this in, is scholarship outreach. I'm going to talk about that a little bit because it's popularized a lot in the last um, probably like 18 months or so. First, we'll get into social profiles. So basically, these are things you can set up probably in like an hour, right? This should take you like a day. When you're launching your site, you should get right into it um, in, on that day one or day two. If you haven't done this yet, it's okay because you can go do it very quickly. Now, the caveat is these are going to be no follow links. So you're not going to be able to like put these up, like put these links up in your social profile and then like rank number one for anything. Okay. These are no follow and they're basically the links that anyone can get. But here's the reason why you want these links. They come into play later. They give your site a look of authenticity and it just makes your brand seem more authentic, your website seem more authentic, which is key because when we talk about blog commenting and guest posting, you want to have a presence online and these social profiles give you that. Now, the key thing to do, don't forget, you need to add your link to the profile, okay? If you don't add your link to the profile, then you don't, you know, get that no follow link, but it, it, it shows like attention to detail. If there are, you know, areas where you need to fill out like your uh, specific uh, details on your site or what your site's about, fill those out, right? Fill in the description and make it complete. Make it look like a real profile because it is a real profile. So treat it like one. Next is internal linking. So this area has shifted over the years a little bit. So you'll see I have silos on here as a, as a reminder. If, if some people have heard of silos, this is um, sort of a throwback to that idea. So silos were a way to like structure a site in a very formal way. You'll see this on like e-commerce sites quite a lot. I can't think of uh, very many off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure like uh, Lowe's, the hardware store, pretty sure they have like a pretty tight E uh, or sorry, a pretty tight like silo structure. The thing is the silo structure doesn't get you the same kind of boost as you used to be able to get. And it could be nice to have like some loose silo structure, but to me, there's too much planning required. And, and I note it here, like, it requires a lot of planning ahead of time and you have to think about your site architecture, which is not an easy thing, right? So if you're trying to plan out your site for like you know, six or 12 or 18 months and all the content you're gonna add and how you're gonna organize it, well, that's a lot of assumptions that you have to make which could change over time, basically creating work that you don't need to do and it's not that important. So what you want to do is you know, use the ideas of a silo structure while avoiding the sort of planning and, you know, rigorous linking that you have to do with a silo structure. And I noted it here. 
I'm going to show you a link in a second where you can like read more about the silo structure to get the basic idea of what's going on. Now, I put in graphic or sorry, like a yeah graphic form here because it's a little easier to see. So you have your home page, and then again, this is the silo. But you don't like you don't have to form your sites like this. In WordPress, these would be pages up here, and these would be pages here. All the subtopics. And the thing is, these subtopics would be like the, the child of the parent. So it's a page and it's just a sub topic of the main topic. Now, when you get into it, you do this very specific linking idea. And I'm showing you this because it'll help you understand how I arrived at my current interlinking, uh, I guess, plan, which is just to interlink all over the place. <laughs> You'll see that in the silo structure, just by the, the definition, they, they being, you know, us, you would like link very deliberately to and from each of the posts in the fashion that I've noted here. I didn't put all the arrows because it would be hard to see this, but these are the main sort of links that you would see. Now, what we need to take away from this is you get the benefit because the links are there, not because it's a parent or a child. You get the benefit because the links are there. So what you need to do is link back and forth all over the place. So you don't need to, I put like I publish everything as a post, right? I don't do any pages. I don't do any of the siloing anymore, right? You don't get this, the right, like same benefit as you may have in the past. So really all you need to do is link, interlink all over the place on your site. Okay. So if it's relevant, if you can link from a relevant post to another post that's related to it, that's the best case scenario. But even if it's not related, that's okay. You can still link to it and get, you know, the positive benefit of having a link. These are like, these are great because they are links that you can control. You control the anchor text, you can control how many you have, and I mean, you could change them when you want to. So just remember, it's not about the silo. It is really about interlinking through your site and doing it in a deliberate way. Next, this is starting to get into external links. So we're gonna do blog commenting. So people will tell me that blog commenting is a waste of time. Okay, so I'll go ahead and answer that right away. They are no follow links. So much like our uh, social profiles, these are no follow links the majority of the time, like 99% of the time. That's okay, because we're doing blog commenting so that we can later get a guest post on the site. So this is literally a networking exercise. That is all it is. You are trying to make friends with influencers in the niche or a related niche, and that's all you're trying to do. Sure, you can get a you know a no follow link, which is fine. You know, my belief is it's still good to have no follow links, right? It's part of a healthy backlink profile. It's just normal, right? So when you look at like big bloggers, you'll see that they basically read other people's blogs and they go ahead and comment on other people's blogs. Because a lot of times, even high level bloggers, right? They're friends with other bloggers and they read each other's blogs and they comment on them. It's a supernatural thing to have and it's not weird, right? So it's, it's totally fine. The other part is it adds to your backlink diversity, which is a good thing, right? So you can get, like more referring domains from different IPs and it just looks healthy versus like the alternative, which is, you know, private blog networks, which we'll talk about in a moment. So you can uh, learn more at nichesiteproject.com slash blog dash commenting. So, or if you like search on YouTube, you can find that too. And I go through, I think it's like a five minute video of how I find blogs to comment on. The key thing, right? So. You got to remember, don't search for the same like search string, strings that everyone else is searching for. And don't try and comment on your competitors like niche site. 
it's not going to get approved, right? You need to go to like non-competitive sites. You need to go to maybe not directly to your like industry or your niche. Go like one step over. So I'm just going to make one up. Like if you have an outdoor site or something like that, like outdoor gear lab, maybe you don't like target outdoor niche sites. Maybe you go to you know, a very specific genre of like outdoor enthusiast, maybe hunting. It's like hunting season here. Uh, I'm not a hunter myself, but a lot of people are very excited about hunting here in Montana. And, you know, if you, if you go to hunting blogs, they're not as like, uh, they're not going to be your direct competitors. So it's a lot more likely that you may be able to network with them. And that's just like one example, but like no matter what your niche is, like you should be able to find some related industries which are relevant. I'm going to pause to just uh, have a sip of water here because I want to be able to talk throughout. Okay. Next is guest posting. So, Guest posts are natural. They are very, um, yeah, they're just very natural. They're recommended by you know high level like marketers, and they work, right? You do need to like keep some things in mind. And basically, with a guest post, you're able to get like the best kind of link you can get, which is a contextual link, like in the body, not in the bio line, and uh, you know not like in the footer or some kind of weird area, you get it in the content and that's the best way to go. Now, the thing is you got to have good content on your site, right? So you can't put up like some kind of bad crappy post that uh, some, you know, writer that you hired from Fiverr, um, like wrote a thousand words on some topic and it's like pure affiliate stuff. You actually have to have like a good solid post like if it's really long and really thorough, that's going to be helpful. And people will leave the links in to your affiliate content if it's good, right? So it has to be good. And really a guest post is the perfect step after you do your blog commenting. So you maybe comment on someone's blog a couple of times, maybe you shoot them an email or two, like they'll know who you are, right? Not a ton of people comment on blogs. I have a blog and like if you comment like more than once, like I'll remember who you are. If you do like intelligent comments where it shows like, you know, you did something with the material or you read it and you now have like an intelligent question about it or you send me, you know, some information about like you implementing what I've talked about, I'll totally remember. Like that goes a long way. If you... <laughs> Like to go back to the blog commenting, if you leave a comment, which is clearly something like you, you didn't read. Sorry, my phone is blowing up here. It's driving me crazy. I've uh, somehow I've ended up on in a list. So I'm getting a bunch of telemarketing calls. Sorry, it is silent now. So the thing is, if you leave a comment like, hey, great post, really enjoyed it. I'm not I, like, I know you didn't read it. So avoid stuff like that and kind of go a little deeper. So these guest posts are natural after you do the blog commenting. And basically you can link to your other guest posts too and do like a link building, uh, like a tiered link building structure with your guest posting. Okay. So, um, and I will mention that guest posts can take you know, a little bit longer for the link juice to kick in because a lot of times those are like newly, I mean, almost 100% of the time they're newly published posts. So that post is coming in with like zero backlinks, right? And if you can link build, like if you could link build two year old guest post, that's a very good thing because it turns out no one else is going to try and link build to your guest post other than you. So you should probably take a look at doing that. Moving on to a gray hat tactic. Again, I don't do these web 2.0s, but here are some of the pros. Now, they are separate blogs hosted on different platforms like wordpress.com or um, like you can get like a Wix or Weebly. There's a few different options that you have 
um, for these Web 2.0 blogs. Actually, there's there's probably like a few dozen of them. You control the links 100%, right? They're your blog. And the key thing here is to like make the site look real. Otherwise, it's probably going to get marked as spam and they're going to like just disable your account and it will go away. Now, the cool thing, since you control it 100%, you can put in the exact anchor text that you want and or need. So it can be an effective way to like diversify your anchor text. So you can use like, you know, the naked URL or the brand uh, name of your site. So you can get brand anchor text going to your site. Now the bad part is basically these sites have like no authority. Sure. the DA is there, but you really are not getting any like real authority from the page. So it's not very powerful. Now, the service like the Hoth, and there's several other like it, but a service like the Hoth, they power up their web 2.0 blogs that they set up for you with their own network. And that sort of shelters you from being attached to like that network, which they're probably not very good sites, right? These are like the, the second tier of links. And they're not that great, but they power up your web 2.0, which is good. And most likely you're not gonna be able to like rank number one just with like web 2.0 blogs, but it's a nice way to get like some links, you get referring domain uh, or more referring domains, and you get anchor text diversity, which is, those are all good things. Now, the big con here is your site can get penalized, right? Like if you do this in, like in, in a too uh, aggressive fashion, if you're too aggressive about it, say with anchor text, you can get penalized. If the network somehow gets uh, discovered or de-indexed, like your site directly maybe won't get impacted. Maybe you won't get penalized, but like if tier two gets penalized or de-indexed, then the power of that Web 2.0 blog what just goes away and then your rankings could drop. Now, again, I don't think you're going to be ranking number one with Web 2.0 blogs alone. Next, number six, private blog networks. This is gray hat again, so I don't, I don't do this, but I know personally that a lot of people do and they are <laughs> private blog networks. That was the reason my sites got penalized back in the day, multiple times. I was using PBNs and back in the day, we were really aggressive about it. So we were very aggressive with anchor text. We were really aggressive with other areas of just sharing links and that sort of thing. So we left huge footprints and a lot of us got penalized. It was very sad. <clears throat> it was very sad for everyone. Of course, the big benefit is you're getting links that are powerful, you're getting links from domains that have a lot of backlinks pointing to them. So you don't have to do that like secondary tier of link building and you can get a link directly from the homepage and just like go from there. It can be really effective. Now, the thing is, depending on a number of factors, right? It may or may not be faster than guest posting like white hat campaign the misconception i think that people have is that you can get uh like you could start a new site it sounds like a lot of people do have like newer sites under you know, 12 or six months in age and there's a misconception that you can like launch a new site buy your links and then skip the sandbox period which is usually around six months and there's then there's a little bit um, more growth after that I haven't found that to be true. I've interviewed about a dozen like very successful you know, niche or authority site people and using the general uh, format that we're talking about today, the general plan that we're talking about, it takes about six months or so, give or take, you know, six weeks, but about six months to hit your first hundred dollar month. So it takes some time for sure. Now, within a year, you could be at $2,000 or $5,000, depending on a number of things. You know, How hard you work on it is probably the number one. And then search volume, the number of posts, the price of the product, a lot of factors. But the point is, 
if you're thinking, hey, I'm going to get private blog network links and, and rank my site faster, it's probably not going to go as fast as you think. White hat and gray hat for a brand new site basically seems to take about the same amount of time. Okay, so the downside for PBNs are obvious, hopefully, but the penalties, right? So you, your site can get penalized in you could work on a site for like a year and then it gets penalized and your you know $250,000 site is now worth basically nothing or like $1,000 and it can literally happen like that. I think all internet marketers have some story where they were making you know 500 bucks a day and then they got penalized and their revenue went to zero. So I have that story. I know a lot of other people do too. It's super sad and I mean, I don't have the stomach for it, which is why I don't do this gray hat stuff anymore. Now, the other part is it can be expensive, right? So if you <laughs> if you uh, like the punishment and you like to you know manage a network, you can set up a PBN yourself. It doesn't have to be super expensive. If you're trying to build a powerful you know network, you're probably going to have to buy your sites from. Uh, or your domains from auctions, and it could be, you know, fairly expensive. Now, the other part is it's just a pain in the butt. Like, it's not very fun to run a network. It can be a little exciting at first, but at some point, it becomes like a factory work that's boring, except you're sitting at a computer. And my guess is you probably don't want to, uh, like, <laughs> like, you probably don't want to sit at your computer all day and like update plugins on you know 50 different domains that you're managing and make sure your sites are up to date and add content to it like we don't want to be you know factory workers sitting at our computer we probably want free time so the point is if you're going with pbns you may just want to like outsource it and buy your links from someone or you know pay to rent the links um, one of my friends matt diggity over at diggity marketing you know that maybe a good network to get into, right? It's, it's locked down pretty tight. Matt's very, you know, he's sort of on the cutting edge of like keeping networks safe. So if you're looking for, you know, PBN links, I would make sure that you are like not going for the cheapest stuff and make sure that you know who you're working with. Okay. So I'll leave it at that. So either it's going to be complicated and boring to set up your network. All right, we're back. I think, are we back? I haven't done this video injection thing before, uh, or at least with the experience. Can people hear me? Are people back? All right, if you're joining late, I know a lot of people join late. I'm sick. So um, I've, I've been coughing a lot. So I thought, hey, I'll just do a pre-recorded. All right, cool. Everyone could hear and see me. Fantastic. Okay, I saw a couple questions come in. This is now the Q&A portion. So if you have questions, now's the time to ask. There were a couple in there already. So I'm going to get to that. I'm going to turn off my lights since I was off, off screen for a minute. All right. First question from Duke. Do I recommend doing content interlinking? Yes. I think the related post widgets are good-ish, but it's kind of nice to like manually put those in. I often have both. I don't always have the related post. Um, uh, I guess, what do you call it? Plugin, but... I think interlinking is a good thing to do. Adrian says, <coughs> you've seen competitors get directory do follow backlinks. So some of them are go going to be fine. So basically Adrian's like, hey, a quarter of the backlinks from my competitor, it looks like there's a bunch of directory links. I think some of them can be fine. I think if they are free, they're probably not going to be very good. But if it costs money to get on the directory, if it has to be accepted, then it could be worthwhile. I think if you had a portion of those as backlinks, it's probably okay. 
I wouldn't want to have too many of them. Like a quarter is probably on the high end, I would say. Okay. Yeah, uh, Cindy, you're right. I took out the scholarship link section because I don't know how viable that is anymore. So there was a, like a manual penalty given out to a bunch of people in the last couple weeks or so. One of them was like the site that repopularized the scholarship stuff. So basically, I would say, don't worry about it. Um, if you're interested, you can go find that case uh, case study on 10 beasts, but basically it was penalized. It was recovered. But at this point, I would say, like, don't worry about scholarship links. Jay says, how many words for a product review post? As many as it takes. So I would start at a minimum of like 800 to 1,000 words and on up to 15,000 words, however many words you need. 5,000 isn't necessarily necessary, but it depends on the keyword and the competition and a bunch of other stuff. All right. Kieran says, you think one of your sites got penalized in early November? Ranking dropped all of a sudden. You had a few Web 2.0s and some other links that weren't good. You removed them, disavowed them. What else would you recommend to get out of the penalty? Did you actually get a penalty in your Webmaster Tools, your search console? Because it sounds like maybe you didn't get a penalty. Maybe like some of those links just lost their effectiveness. Because a penalty, like you get an email that you, that you have like a manual penalty. Um, but I guess if it's not manual, maybe you got caught up somewhere else. I guess generally I would just make sure, Karen, that... So you disavowed. That's good. You remove some, you disavowed. And then from there, I guess, you know, get better links, get good links. Okay. Adrian says, do I know of any paid directories that I would recommend? No, but it sounds like you know of about uh, 40 of them. So like your, <laughs> your competitor has a bunch of them. So go see what they use, right? Joe, what do you normally put on a category page? On just whatever the default is for the theme. I, I don't worry about category pages. Okay, Karen says, you believe it was a penalty. There was such a sharp drop, but you didn't receive any manual penalty email. Okay, interesting. You know what? And I'm not, I'm not super experienced in that area, but what I was going to say is I believe that I guess technically you could have get gotten, you could have been caught up in some algorithmic, you know, not necessarily an update, but maybe your site went over a threshold for something. The other thing is, you know, sometimes um, if you had web 2.0 blogs um, and they were supported, right, with like a second tier, then if the second tier gets, say, de-indexed or not recognized, then the power of those links that you had, go it goes away. And maybe you're not penalized, but you just don't have the links that you used to have. And Santiago says, when will Five Figure Niche Site open? Thanks. Uh, it's, it'll open in like two weeks. Um, I haven't mentioned it. Oh, yeah. You know what? With my sickness, I've been sort of absent-minded basically um next week i'm doing a free like three-part email course right it's a little mini course kind of getting people in the mood to get started on on their sites and stuff and then the next week the 15th through the 19th is when the course is going to be open so it's only five days that it's open okay Cindy says, on the social profiles, do you have to post or just do the profiles? Just do the profiles um, off the bat. I'm not a big social media person, so I tend to not participate too much. It may be good to post a couple things, like every, like for the first week or something, just get a few things up. But, you know, if you create a YouTube channel, for example, like you don't necessarily have to like post YouTube videos. You could just maybe create a playlist or two, just have a little bit of activity, and that's good. But generally, just create the profile and then move on. All right, Adrian, thanks. Yeah, I hope I can shake this cold soon. 
Jay says, do I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching? Yeah, sure do. Um, I do try and make sure that like I can actually help you, right? So I don't I don't work with everyone. A lot of times, um, depending on what you need help on, the course is the best option. I'm still uh, working on the prices. Um, if people were on like the live stream yesterday, I don't usually t like mention the prices because if I change it and then you are expecting a certain price, then I don't want you to be disappointed. So it's a premium course. Um, it's you know in the six hundred dollar plus range. So there's a lot of interaction uh, with me, and that's part of the reason there's an enrollment period and stuff. So. It's, it is a premium course for sure. Karen, do I recommend GSA for second tier? No, no, I wouldn't recommend that. I think, you know, there was a time when that could work a little bit, but um, I think the second and third tier are more important than they used to be. Jay says, can I list out the 10 priority social media sites? Um, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram. Let me pull open the slides here. And uh, by the way, there's like a bunch of different social uh, sites. So you could pick, pick whatever ones you want. So Facebook, Twitter, Google plus Instagram, YouTube, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Pinterest, MySpace, LinkedIn. And I mean, there are specific uh, others out there too. So, you know, whichever ones you want. And the point is, I mean, part of it, it makes the site look a little bit more well-rounded, right? If you have like your social media links. Um, but, you know, from a networking perspective, like you could actually meet people through the networks. Chris says, starting out. Okay. Do I recommend a separate hosting account, separate email, separate WordPress accounts or would a shared hosting account with separate accounts be enough to create safety from being penalized? So in general, if you're just starting out, you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. Just have like one site <laughs> and go from there. Generally, like if you, in the first couple sites, like you probably can just put it on the same account, but you know, as you grow, like Rob that I mentioned earlier, like he may have each of his sites on like a different hosting account because they get a lot of traffic, that sort of thing. All right. Uh, Luong says, how can I get the most out of a backlink? I don't know how to answer that really. It's kind of a weird question. Um, how do you, can you get the most, I mean, get it in the best site that you can, but I think you really want to ask a different question and I'm not sure what you're getting at. So, you know, the anchor text is important, but yeah, maybe you clarify your question Luong. Karen says, how many exact anchor texts should we be using for link building? The... It's not an exact science, but I would go check out, actually, I should probably do a video on this. Um, go check out Ahrefs. They have uh, a couple a couple different analyses on anchor text. And I think like sites that were ranking number one and number two had like something like 15 to 20% exact match anchor text, which is like way higher than what you know, a lot of affiliates would feel comfortable with these days. So I would say if it's a long phrase, um, then you probably don't want too many matches, uh, exact matches, maybe one or two. But if it's like a pretty, you know, if it's like, uh, you know, best iPhone case, something like that, then maybe, you know, you could be a little more aggressive. But in general, I do long phrases that are keyword rich. So long sentences. Santiago says, do I recommend <coughs> to pay for infographic directories? I don't know much about it. Um, so I would say probably not. But if you have like a hunch about it or something, then maybe check it out. But um, 
you know, kind of going back to what Adrian was asking earlier, I mean, some directories uh, are probably fine. If you can get into paid ones, and those are probably the better ones to get into versus just like free ones that everyone can get into. Any kind of barrier to entry is a good thing. All right, what other questions do we have here? We have all weighing on, and I am uh, I'm fighting a cold. So <laughs> if we have questions, I'll, I'll field them. But if not, and by the way, I am doing a live stream tomorrow. Again, I'm doing a live stream on YouTube, which is the general Q&A. So I can field other questions there. Hopefully, I'll feel better. I haven't had any caffeine today, so I'm just going to try and go back to sleep for a few hours. I've just been sleeping terribly. I got this new Fitbit um, here, and it's it's cool. It like can help you monitor your sleep. And anybody have a Fitbit where they monitor their sleep you know anyone into that so the thing is like on a normal on a normal day i'll get maybe actually i can i can tell you the exact numbers since no one is, is asking questions then I'll, I'll tell you random stuff that you're not asking about <laughs> like on a normal a normal good day which it's been a while since i've had a good night's sleep um but on like say a normal great day, I'll have like 50% light sleep, I'll have 15 to 20% deep or REM sleep. And last night, um, sadly, it's crazy. I went to bed at 8.43, pretty early before nine o'clock, but I only got 37 minutes of REM sleep, 37 of deep sleep, and 67% of light sleep. So. I'm very tired. Okay. Bought some time. All right. So John's asking a content question. Can I speak more about how I approach keyword research on a site? One keyword per page. Yeah. So there's a whole other presentation on this, by the way. So I'll just talk about it a little bit, but you should definitely watch the other presentation because I talk about like long tail stuff. So the keyword golden ratio, basically I just target one keyword per page. You'll rank for other stuff, but you know, basically you'll, you'll target exactly what you're trying to rank for. And then you go from there. Um, you know, I don't put any kind of constraints on the writers to like use keywords or not use keywords. I just tell them to write the article. If you tell them like, certain things to put in there a certain number of times to you know use the keywords you're going to end up with like some kind of weird article and the writer's not going to be super happy um just in general if they have to work with those constraints so, so jay i hope that answers your question do check out that other webinar um on content uh really keyword research All right, Jay, you were wondering how I work with writers. Well, you're in luck. I hope you auto subscribe to the other, the presentation next week, January 11th, same time, same place, is literally on scaling content for niche sites. So it's like how I, um, you know, create or, yeah, added a bunch of content and stuff. Cool. And Jay says, you're familiar with the keyword golden ratio through me. You know, uh, Jay, I, I made it up. I made up the whole thing. <laughs> Pretty crazy, huh? All right. Any other questions? Yeah. So if you check out that other presentation, um, it should really like clear things up. I, you know what? Let me check. I'll put a link in here because I'm not sure if it's on YouTube yet. So I'll hook you up with a link here. And I think you can get to the replay and maybe even watch it on the youtube side yeah watch the replay you know i think you could follow the link to get over to youtube and then you could put it on double speed or whatever you want to do someone commented the other day um i think it was yesterday it was just your videos are long and i'm like come on man it's like a live stream free content and you're complaining that the videos are too long just uh you know fast forward it buddy 
it's free. What do you want me to do? So, all right. Okay, I think that's all the questions. And uh, by the way, we still have a handful of people. There's 40 people on. I did, um, I published a new video on YouTube today. I've been doing more and more interviews. Do people like the interviews? Um, and I got, uh, you know, I've, I was going to, I was going to cut it off, but if I have people that have been hanging around for a little while, I know you're interested in what I'm saying, or at least uh, you're interested in what's going on. So basically, I'm curious about like the interviews and stuff. So for me in UK says long videos are good. Yeah, like it definitely is easier to do long videos uh, in an interesting way. It's like you can just keep going and going. And you know, funny, weird thing, like I've been having trouble, like when I publish a new video, a lot of times like publish to subscribers feed and notify subscribers, it's like it won't be checked off. Um, and I checked it and I must have like refreshed and I don't know, I was going to say this video that I'm about to send a link for everybody. Unfortunately, it looks like it wasn't shared with the subscribers. So like not too many people saw it. So it's right here. Cool guy named uh, John Robinson, digital nomad. So yeah, just curious, was curious if people are into, you know, long videos, at least a few people like the long videos. I am doing some more short ones coming up here soon, about three minutes long. Interviews seem to be interesting overall. So, okay, cool. Thanks everyone for hanging around. And we'll catch you tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to the channels. And um, okay, I see Santiago says, do I use silos? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. It's too complicated to plan out just in general. So, all right. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to go take a nap. See you tomorrow.